Hi, do you remember the big news about uh, six months ago in July 2016 when Autodesk bought CADsoft Eagle, the Eagle PCB CAD program? They actually bought it from Farnells, and Farnells bought it and bought CADsoft Eagle uh, a couple of years before that. And everyone was kind of worried about what was going to happen and things like that. And Artifruit did an interview with uh, the head of the new electronics division at Autodesk, who coincidentally is a former Altium uh, colleague of mine. And it was all, you know, sounded pretty good, reassuring, things like that. But uh, people were still getting a little bit of the heebie-jeebies, wondering about what the future would hold. Now, one of the major concerns was that uh, they would switch over to a subscription-based model and or cloud-based uh, software because Eagle has always been a perpetual license, i.e. you buy it one-off cost and they give you a license key code, you've got the executable, that's it, you don't need to uh, ping back to the server or do anything else, you can still use it in 20, 30 years' time if you've still got the hardware to run it. And of course, having the finely honed bullshit detector that I do, I read their complete non-answer to this uh, question, called them out, and they should have said they should have just been honest and said it's going to cloud and subscription-based. But sure enough, they responded and said, hey, Dave, it's not going subscription. So there, smiley, at this stage, it isn't anywhere on my roadmap. Thought about it, decided against it. Can't say that we will never in the life of the product do that. No, of course not. That would be at best unfair, at worst dishonest. But I have so many things that are more pressing. So there you go. Very reassuring from just six months ago. It's not going to subscription based. Yeah, you guessed it. Yep, I called it, or at least half of it. They went to subscription-based pricing today. But they, hey, they haven't gone to cloud yet. But hey, I'm sure it's not Matt's fault. I mean, he works for Autodesk. Autodesk are huge, big corporate, big company mentality. And I think the majority or most of their other products are, are also subscription-type-based uh, you know, services. So it was obvious they were going to do this. And it's so funny, just a few days ago on the EEV blog forum when they're talking about the new version of software that they're going to release, which uh, they just did with this new license feature. You guys have no idea the awesome that is about to drop. Yeah, they dropped one all right. It's a big stinky one. And of course, changing owners seems to erase company memory very, very quickly. Here's a post from two years ago when they introduced version 7. And what do you know, they introduced a new license management feature. With the release of Eagle version 7, CADsoft Computer introduced a new license management system for Eagle in order to better protect our intellectual property and offer more flexibility and control to customers with multi-user licenses on a network. During the two weeks since the launch of Eagle version 7, we have been listening carefully to your constructive feedback and concerns about the new license management technology and have decided to remove the license management features. And with version 7.1, they caved in, listened to all the complaints, and they dropped it. But yeah, two years later, new managements come in and yeah, they haven't learnt the same lesson, but maybe they're about to. And they're not beating around the bush either. Here's a post from uh, George Garcia, who works for uh, Autodesk on the um, Autodesk forums, the Eagle forums. As it stands now, if you are not on subscription, you won't be able to use Eagle version 8 or any other version that may come out in the future. It behaves like an electric bill. If you don't pay the power, you get shut off. At this point in time and under this licensing mechanism, there is no solution for off-network machines, i.e. ones disconnected from the interwebs. There are other schemes at Autodesk that do allow off-network licenses, but Eagle currently does not have them. I'll be making our management aware of this full threat and see what improvements can be made. <laughs> you think? Autodesk is full subscription going forward and this position is non-negotiable. I know that for a lot of you this is not good news. You think again? But there's not much that can be done about it. I'm truly sorry, guys. Yeah, I'm sorry too, George, but uh, yep, I think you're going to get a fair bit of backlash from this one. And predictably, the campers aren't happy. They've been angry all day over it. Bye-bye, Eagle. <laughs> Purge Eagle, install KeyCAD. 
And there's no shortage of people saying it's a complete showstopper for them. Eagle is dead to me. This is a no-go. This totally kills it for me. It just goes on and on. And there's even a user who's got 30 professional licenses and, well, they're not going to upgrade. They're going to stick with version 7. And also, predictably, there are calls everywhere to switch to KeyCAD, open source software, all that sort of stuff. And somebody even came up with the excellent idea down the bottom there to uh, uh, give his entire team 2K bonus to learn KeyCAD and make a tax-deductible donation to the free and open source community. Love it. But there's some good news, the free version of Eagle, which of course made it the de facto industry standard in the open source hardware community, is still free, which is great. In fact, they've uh, increased the capabilities of the free version, I believe. But the downside, yeah, you need an Autodesk account to download it or to upgrade a future version. Oh. And of course you might say, Dave, what's the big deal? You know, everyone, everything's going to this subscription model. Well, yeah, that's true. And I personally use a lot of subscription stuff and I don't have too much of a problem with this uh, personally. But the problem is a lot of people do, not only on principle, but for the work environment and their workflow. And Eagle recognized this a couple of years back when they admitted here, we understand that for a large group of customers, the current license management is causing limitations or simply not usable in your current workflow. I've worked at companies where you are uh, like cut off from the internet, you are firewalled from the internet. And if your software has to go back to the internet periodically to check your license, then it is simply an unusable product, uh, like based on company procedures, you simply cannot use it. Or for those who want to, let's say you want to, you know, you're going on a, a plane trip, you know, you're going, for me, it takes me 24 hours to get, uh, 30 hours to get to the other side of the planet. You know, I want to be able to use something standalone. If you're sitting on a beach for a couple of weeks, if you've gone out back, whatever, you know, if you're disconnected or got unreliable internet, you don't want to be tied into it. But as a consolation, they have actually thought of this. Here's a uh, post from Matt on uh, the forum. If you lose your network connection, the software has a 14-day heartbeat that will enable you to work offline for 14 days. Uh, I know I, some folks would prefer to never have to connect, but this is required to support their monthly subscription model. And we'll get into the prices in a minute because they've changed over. And, well, they want people to be able to have the flexibility to rent monthly. And fair enough but that's then now locked them into this 14 day online subscription heartbeat requirement and it's just going to be a complete showstopper for people either due to serious requirements or just on principle the biggest problem with not having a perpetual license option, a standalone license option, is you don't have the ability to, uh, when you make your CAD files for a particular product, then just like zip and uh, archive the software, the license keys, everything. A lot of companies and people take complete snapshots of their hard drive and back those up so that they can instantly come back in 10, 15 years time when the customer has to, oh, you've got to upgrade the product or the customer needs some support or something like that. You've got to change it and you can just get back up and running with the thing but now with this online license thing you don't have that standalone license key that you can then zip up and archive and then just get up and running later you if you come back in 10 years time hey the company may not be there but hey it's autodesk okay the product may not be there anymore but hey okay it's autodesk or your license for that particular version that you have may not exist but hey it's autodesk or you might be able to buy the latest license for the latest version but then you've got problems with that your old files may not be uh, compatible it could be some bug quirk you can't load it in that's why people take snapshots of their entire development systems anyone who's really serious about long-term maintainability either just because or because you have contractual uh, requirements i've worked in large companies where we're contractually obligated to provide support for 10 or 20 years or whatever and you can't do that with this type of subscription model cad tool and well that's the thing these companies just don't get it CAD software is not like your regular consumer software. It's almost a religion. I know it is like that with, you know, some other uh, consumer type software, but uh, this is a tool for professionals that invest their entire career sometimes learning how to use this tool. And when you try and uh, change it on them, they don't change the way it works 
operates the the entire subscription model you turn it on its head and you're gonna get this backlash it's just people will just get angry on principle uh let alone due to practical requirements they they really are going to be in for a hard time here and they learned this two years ago and they're probably going to learn the exact same lesson yet again now of course eagle aren't the only ones to uh change things up like this altium for example a famous infamous for turning the world of electronics design upside down and changing the way they do things, their models, their pricing, their licensing, the uh, features they're going to focus on, everything else. And they specialized in shooting themselves in the foot pew, 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 at every available opportunity. But hey, the customers stuck around because A, they were loyal, they're tied into the software, and there wasn't really any serious competition in the sort of price point that Altium were operating at but this is different for Eagle just look at all the people saying well I'm going to go to KeyCAD I'm going to go to DipTrace I'm going to go to you know uh, insert one here the new circuit uh, studio has a Altium have a standalone license for example Eagle just aren't in the same position as say as someone like Altium was when they make these big changes there are so many other options most of their majority of their business is going to be that, that you know small hobbyist hacker maker you know one man band you know five person company or whatever they have doing smallish type stuff no real serious professional companies out there you know using eagle you don't see it in the job requirements of professional companies and stuff like that these are people who can switch much easier and this backlash is real like they need to take this serious they may not survive well they'll survive as a company but they may not survive this intact in terms of their uh, reputation they're going to lose a lot of business over this and there's been some talk about how it's actually um, can be potentially more expensive now as well and that's a yes and a no let's take a look at the new pricing mod so now they've got two versions instead of three, Eagle Standard and Eagle Premium. Eagle Standard, $15 if you just want the monthly thing or 100 bucks a year if you want to go for the yearly option. And the Eagle Premium is $65 a month or 500 bucks a year. So if we take a look at their original prices on the uh, left-hand side here, you can see that they actually had three standards, Eagle Light, Eagle Standard, and Eagle Professional. They've gotten rid of Eagle Light, and they've only got the Eagle Standard now, but Eagle Standard has changed. You can see how it used to have six layers there with 160 by 100 millimeter routing area. Well, now it's only two layers for that uh, $10 uh, a month or 100 bucks a year. So that has uh, changed fairly significantly. So if you just wanted to jump up to like a four-layer, board they don't really have that option anymore you've got to go up to the premium so in that sort of case yes it's more expensive if you had that limited routing size and the four layer or six layer requirement but I've always thought that this was really completely stupid. I mean, why would you pay, you know, 500 bucks or, you know, 820 bucks if you want the auto router for a lousy 160 millimeter by 100 millimeter routing area? It is oh, just ridiculous. If you want a single layer board with one part on it that's 161 millimeters, you've got to jump up to the before you had to jump up to the $1,100 model but now it's actually cheaper to sort of like go pro on the Eagle premium here at six it's only now 500 bucks a year so it's more, more than half it used to be 1145 and now it's only 500 bucks so I think overall more people are going to win out on this pricing structure so I don't quite know why there's a bit of an uproar over the pricing here maybe if you're stuck in that mid sort of near airy fairy area yeah okay fair enough but no i think it's much better now but the good news is that, is that you can now actually just rent it for a month if you want that 16 layers unlimited board area size rent it for a month and bob's your uncle right you can i guess you can always go back to your uh previous uh subscription you know your lower subscription model and uh altium were going to do this with uh circuit maker uh, originally and i thought i actually saw this before they released and i thought that was the subscription like the monthly thing being able to rent like certain features that's actually quite valuable so I think that's a, a kind of a good move, but of course that's pushed them into that, you know, that license checking online requirement. You can't have that standalone license. And that's the big bugbear here is that, that most people are, are up in an uproar because they just don't have that standalone perpetual license. That's the real killer here. 
But hey, also on the positive side, Autodesk Takeover has meant that they're actually finally adding all these new features. I mean, they got BGA Fan out, and they're adding routing, different new routing engines, and all sorts of stuff that they're adding in. So that's you know that's terrific. But yeah, I can understand why there's a big uproar over this thing, and to completely flip your pricing model, especially so soon, like six months or less after buying the company, they must have made this decision, you know, a month or two back, uh, only to, you know, to be able to roll it out now, and they flipped on that. Uh, they did a complete U-turn on that pretty darn quickly. Uh, you know, they were promised, basically, back at the start that, no, we've investigated, no, we're not going to the subscription model. So you think, okay, maybe a couple of years down the track, they might change their mind. But nope, flip-flop after, you know, less than half a year. Ridiculous. Anyway, I can understand the uproar, and they need to fix this. It's just ridiculous. They need to have that standalone license option. Otherwise, it's, as I said before, it's easy, relatively easy for people to leave uh, from Eagle because it, it doesn't have that, you know, locked in structure that, you know, your other higher end packages have. There's too many other options. So, yeah, I don't like it at all. Speaking of options, if you did want to switch over to KeyCAD, then my esteemed uh, Ampower co-host, uh, Chris Gamel, who runs Contextual Electronics, said... He would kill a puppy if I didn't uh, recommend Contextual Electronics over here in his Get Into Blinky program where you can learn KeyCAD and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, we don't want to kill a puppy. So, yeah, check it out. So, yep, Autodesk and Eagle, uh, they've really opened a big can of worms here and they're copping a lot of flack over it. And I think, you know, rightly so. I think they need to sort this mess out and they recognised it two years ago and they're going to, looks like they're making the same mistake again. They don't quite understand the intricacies of the uh, CAD market and the user base. But anyway, let us know what you think. If you've got opinions on this, would you dare touch subscription CAD software like this and if so tell us why is it principal or do you have uh you know some requirement that uh, you know really makes this a showstopper for you leave it in the youtube comments or on the ev blog forum down below catch you next time